In our two sample hypothesis testing, we still need to go through our steps of our hypothesis testing that we did with one sample hypothesis testing. Uh, they are just slightly different um, because instead of dealing with just one group, we are now dealing with two. So when we start off, we still need to figure out our data type, if it's categorical or if it's numerical. Now the tricky thing is, is like for the means and when we collect our data, we actually are going to have a column, we'll have two columns of data. So we'll have one that's called the grouping column and then we'll have like variable of interest. So in, when we're dealing with means, this is going to be like group A, group B, group A, group A, group B, and then we'll have like 10, 20, 15, 18, uh, and going on down. So this is, we see here that we have both numerical and categorical data. So what is our data type? Well, the data type for our test is determined about what is our variable of interest. So if we are interested in, uh, we'll say, I don't know, the average speed down the hill, uh, let's do like alpine racing for the United States versus Great Britain. Maybe we're at the Winter Olympics and we're comparing these two teams to one another. Group A would be the United States, Group B would be Great Britain, and we'd be looking at their speeds and we could figure out their average speeds and compare those two groups to one another. In that case, because we're looking at speed or maybe time down the mountain, those would be numerical data, even though that we also have this categorical. The grouping variable is what splits it into two groups. These are what we are comparing one to another. So we've got to make sure that our data type is with our variable of interest. Now let's say that instead of doing numerical data, let's say that we were looking at categorical data where we still have these two different groups. Maybe instead we are looking at, we send out a survey and it's uh, to, I don't know, to people who live on the east coast versus people, or people who live on the coasts versus people who live in the center of the United States about whether or not you approve of your senators. And this could be yes, no, yes, no, no, and now we actually have, we still have our grouping variable, which is categorical. We, the grouping variable is always going to be categorical. And our variable of interest instead is now a piece of categorical data. So we just have to look at our data type. It's not just that we are only going to have numerical or we're only going to have categorical. The data type is asking basically your variable of interest. Is that categorical or numerical data? Okay, so that was kind of like step one. Step two, we need to look at our populations and our parameters. All right, so our populations are like, where are our samples being taken from and who are we trying to make some conclusion about? Are we trying to conclude about everybody in the United States? Are we trying to conclude about, you know, just people locally? So in, it's what two big groups that you're wanting to compare to one another. Uh, so maybe for our populations, we want to compare, um, the like two local high schools and seeing their sports teams and we want to see the proportions of play or the proportions of students who participate in um, in extracurricular sports and we could then compare these two call these schools to one another maybe one is known to be as the kind of the sporty school in town and maybe one is the theater or the academic school in town we were just comparing the two to one another uh, the parameters is then you want to, well, you kind of know the parameter already from the data type. So if we're dealing with numerical, we know that we're dealing with means. If we're dealing with proportions, we know that we're, uh, if we're dealing with um, categorical data, we know that we're dealing with proportions. But the parameter of interest needs to be a little bit more specific. Like this should be like uh, the true mean uh, speed down the hill. That would be the, the, our, our parameter that they were interested in. Uh, or maybe it's like we're interested in the true proportion of, uh, of students who participate in athletics. So we need to make sure that we get, get those. And what is interesting is it's not just for one group now. So let's, uh, let's put up an example of 
of how we need to look at our populations and our parameters. Okay, so let's suppose that, let's do this example of high school, of two different high schools. So we're looking at two high schools And we'll call one high school um, Prairie, and we'll call the other one Summit. And that we are looking at, we'll look at, uh, we'll look at proportions this time. And we'll say we're looking at like our true proportion. Proportion who play sports. Okay, so our populations that we're looking at are uh, the students at Prairie High School and another population of the students at Summit. And then the parameter that we are looking at would be the true proportion who play sports at Prairie compared to the true proportion who play sports at Summit. So if we were to write out a you know, little null hypothesis, this would be pi, I'll do subscript p for prairie, minus p for summit. And we're just going to go with this baseline assumption that it equals 0. So the reason why we do this is just to help us basically be able to interpret what is our hypothesis meaning and to help us later on when we get to our conclusion. Okay, once we get to assumptions, um, we have to basically look at uh, our central limit theorem. Like, can we apply our central limit theorem here? Because that's basically uh, what we are enacting uh, all over again. So, let's go ahead and put up our assumptions for these groups and we'll go from there. Okay, so if we are dealing with numerical data, here's what we're looking for. We still need to have, like for our assumptions, we still need to have a good sample. You know, that it's random, that it's representative of our population. Uh, so we need to make sure that that is being taken care of. And then another assumption that, that we need is that we need to know, it's like, is our data, uh, we've got two options. Either we have to know that these groups are, are normally distributed, Sometimes we, we know that, or sometimes it's a good assumption to have. Or we need to have that n1 is greater than or equal to 30, and n2 is greater than or equal to 30. This is really important. Um, we still need to be able to invoke Remember, this is like our central limit theorem check. Now, if what's interesting is that when we do these um, when we do these experiments, the sample sizes between these two schools do not have to be the same. It's just that both of them have to be at least thirty. So it can't be like fifteen here and fifteen here. That that doesn't work. It has to be at least thirty in both groups because we need enough. Uh, to ensure that the sampling distributions are in fact going to be normally distributed or we've got to know that the groups that the that the original distribution of the groups are in fact normally distributed so we've got to check both of them if one of them let's say one is 50 which is great but the other is only 10 then we would need to stop and say that hey we shouldn't be doing this because the sample size is simply too small so those are kind of our checks if we need to do it in our assumptions if we are doing a numerical uh, if we are doing uh, 
categorical. Checks are very similar. We still need a good sample. And for a central limit theorem, we don't get this groups are normally distributed. We don't get to make that. What instead we have to do is we have to do this big check of that sample size 1 multiplied by the sample proportion 1 uh, is greater than or equal to 15. That n1 times p1 complement is greater than or equal to 15. So we need at least 15 successes and 15 failures in the first group. And we need at least 15 successes and 15 failures in our second group. And this is our central limit theorem check. So if one of these, if only one of them fails, we got to stop. We don't have enough, uh, enough data to actually be able to appropriately do our testing. Now, like, you can totally ram it through our, uh, um, our software, and it will do the math for you. Uh, but the results can be just nonsense because of how small the sample size are. So you could be making conclusions that really aren't there, or finding results or, um, or correlations with your data that just don't exist. So you need to be careful about this, and this is why we need to do this kind of central limit theorem check.